Unit 1, um, Unit 1 is about the scientific process and thinking. Uh, it covers uh, what we call GLI 31, 32, and 25. Our first objective, or our learning target, is to list and define each step of the scientific method in order. So, and, and this leads us to the next question. What is the scientific method? What is it? Well, first of all, science is a way of thinking. Uh, it's, and please, you have to understand that it's not only just uh, science way of thinking, but this is what scientists kind of go about or the process they use uh, to solve problems. It's sometimes uh, called organized common sense because as, as you go through the scientific method, it is really common sense. Uh, there's a series of steps that this, it, it, you do it probably every day without even thinking about it. Um, so, which leads us to the next thing. Think about it. Uh, a lot of science seems a contradiction in common sense. Uh, take, for example, the Earth. Uh, you know, imagine, you know, 200, 300 years ago when they said, hey, you know, the Earth is round. Well, common sense tells you, uh, no, it, it's flat. I mean, look, you, know, you look across the horizon, and you see it's flat. But we actually know that the Earth is actually round. We know that now today. So what does that do to our notion that science is organized common sense? Well, how about this? Science is more of organized curiosity. And how do we organize this curiosity? Well, we use the scientific method. And all scientists do this. Now, you know, depending on what they're studying, they apply the scientific method a little bit differently. Uh, but they all try basically to follow the same series of steps. And then, of course, what is the scientific method? A plan of organizing an investigation is what it really is. The scientific method involves a series of steps that are used to investigate a natural occurrence. Of course, that's what science is. The science is the study of natural, uh, natural things. So that scientific method is the steps that we use to, you know, to uh, solve problems uh, if, and we, we observe in nature. The scientific method is, here are the steps. Number one, you've got to identify a problem or a question. Second step is gather and use background information. Uh, this is not always the funnest step, but it's real important so that um, step number three, when you formulate a hypothesis, you're formulating something that's you know based on background information. You're not just making a guess like, oh, you know, uh, plants are green because aliens uh, came down and painted them, that kind of thing. Uh, next is to f uh, perform an experiment to test your hypothesis. Number five is to collect and analyze data as you're running. Now, a lot of books will have uh, four, step four to perform an experiment and five together because a lot, you know, when you're doing an experiment and you're performing the experiment, you are also at the same time collecting and analyzing data. Uh, they're not two separate things so much. And then the last is to draw a valid conclusion based on what you saw from your data and your experiment. So let's look at these steps in more detail. The first one, problem or question. You're going to develop a question or a problem that can be solved through experimentation. This is important. Um, when, when people come up with these problems, they've got to make sure that, hey, can I, you know, or question, can I solve this through experimentation? Gather and use background information. Uh, this is important uh, in the fact that you know, a lot of times scientists, you know, professional scientists, um, if they're working on a problem, um, a lot of times, you know, they're under a time constraint. They want to get this, you know, problem solved as quickly as possible. And it, so they'll go and do some background information, get as much information as they can about their subject. This saves them time and, and um, money in the fact that if some scientist has done the same experiment or is, you know, working on the same kind of thing, they don't have to repeat something that the scientist says, hey, this doesn't work. Yes, you know, think about medicine. It was the one that it comes to my mind. You know, we're, we're trying to find a cure for cancer. Well, we don't want all these scientists doing the same experiment and coming up with, you know, fail, you know, results that don't cure cancer. We need them to share that information so that they say, okay, this doesn't work. Let's try something else. Uh, and so that's uh, why gathering and using background information is so important. 
The next step, do you remember what the next step is? Formulating hypothesis. This is a prediction because of uh, an answer to your problem or question. You know, after you do some background information, you know, you've got to have an idea of what you, th you, know, you think your results are going to be. Um, and here, the example here is, if soil temperatures rise, then plant growth will increase. Now, if you've done step two, you're going to research, you know, the effects of soil temperature on plant growth. So you're going to have an idea, hopefully, whether this is going to work or not. And you might even see somebody else has done it with certain types of plants. And you, you know, for example, people may have done this with uh, geraniums. And they've tried to grow geraniums in different temperature or temp temperatures of soil and see what the results are. And, they've, and they tell you, and they show you that, and they tell you that. And you say, hey, look, that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do it with cactuses, or I'll do it with dandelions, or something like that. And so you'll have an idea, based on what they did, will this, you know, what will happen? What, what temperature may be the optimum for plant growth, if there is one? The next thing is to perform an ex the experiment. Uh, you're going to develop and follow a procedure, uh, which includes a detailed materials list, um, and the, here is another important part. The outcome must be measurable. Uh, it's just like you don't want you don't want it to be so much based on someone's opinion uh, because that's hard to what we call qualify or you know a lot of this with the scientific methods you want somebody else to be able to repeat your experiment and get the same results. Well, if it's kind of based on your opinion, then you know oh you know well you know the plant was large. Um, you know, well, what's large? Um, you know, everybody's what has uh, different numbers. Large might be d a different, so it needs to be something you can measure. Then you're going to collect and analyze data. Now, like I said before, this is happening at the same time as step four, which is run the experiment. Uh, now, here, when you collect and analyze your data, uh, modify the procedure if needed. Sometimes, if something's not working or something like that. You may have to modify your your, your procedure uh, to get some results, um, and then you're going to keep you know from those results. Then what you might want to do is you know modify it. You know, let's say for example, the growing of the plant in different uh, temperatures of soil. Well, when you start out, you may have extreme temperatures. You know, for example, you may have soil that is very very hot that you keep in an oven or keep it in a very you know a warm place and it's very hot then you have like room temperature a uh, soil and then you may have soil that you keep in a freezer so we're talking about very different temperatures and as your results you may find one you know one particular temperature of those extremes is growing more than the other two well then you say okay well let's limit the field down now let's maybe not go as cold and maybe not go as hot and you know start to shrink it down to, to get more of a finer de um, pinpoint of what is the optimum temperature of the soil and you keep doing that over and over again eventually you may even change only change the soil might be by five degrees to see what is the optimum temperature specifically because if you do it way you know from extreme cold ext and extreme hot and in the middle you you know there's such a large gap that you really don't know the real specific optimum temperature would be you know so if you shrink it down a little bit and get you know closer and closer and and have the um temperatures at a smaller varying degree then you're going to be able to be more accurate with your uh pinpointing of which temperature is the optimum uh again you want to conserve, confirm these results by retesting and include tables graphs and photographs Then draw valid conclusions. Include a statement that accepts or rejects your hypothesis. Uh, we'll talk more about drawing conclusions. Uh, we're going to be writing those later on in class. So, but just understand that you're going to draw a valid conclusion from um, your results, and you need to link it back to your hypothesis. Now, can you remember all six steps? Number one, step one, come up with a question or a problem. Step two, find background information or, or do your background research. Step three, formulate a hypothesis. Step four, 
run your experiments to test that hypothesis. Step five, which is going to be in conjunction with step four, analyze, collect and analyze your data. And uh, the last step is to uh, draw a valid conclusion.